Hello everyone, welcome back in another episode of Pizza Time. After several insistent messages and requests from many of you, I finally decided to buy the heating element by Coera that has finally arrived about two weeks of waiting. So in the video today we will see everything there is to know about this heating element on how to mount it, how to modify the electrical system and also how to do the forging and so on. Being this a simple but long procedure, I apologize in advance for the duration of this video. As you have seen in the previous videos, we can already obtain excellent results by keeping the original components of the oven by moving the lower heating element in the upper dome if you have not yet seen that video you can do it by clicking here the top right corner in the recommended videos even if you get a total of 1200 watts of total power reducing the baking time to a maximum of 90 seconds or 60 seconds depending on the topping of your pizza and also practically at zero cost there are anyway some disadvantages such as for example the inhomogeneity of baking because the thermal elements will never be perfectly parallel or for example the diameter that remains in any case reduced. The Coera is instead available in 1200, 1400 and 1600 watts versions and should give us the following advantages. First of all we are able to reach the temperature on stone much faster when compared to the two heating elements also thanks to the additional power. Then we should have also a more uniform baking being the Coera double circle heating element. Moreover the forging of the Coera and being able to forge it to our liking will help a lot as we could be precise in centering the heating element in the stone in order to ensure a uniform baking. Will obviously allow us to have wider pizza a few centimeters more. And then we obviously have the baking time that goes down from 90 to about 50 or 60 seconds. In this video we will see the 1400 watts version which costs about 50 or 60 dollars depending on the type of international shipping you choose because this product is produced in Spain. I leave you the link down below in the description anyway with the contacts for the purchase. At this price we should obviously add the thermal insulating mat made of a ceramic fiber or a similar material which costs between 10 or 20 dollars. The mat can be obviously be omitted for lower power heating elements so lower than 1400 watts. The mod itself is simple than the mod that we did for the double heating element and will basically consist in switching from a system in series to one in parallel going then from 110 volts to 220 volts but it's still a very simple operation practically we just connect the coera with the two cables we used for the upper heating element and then we connect together the other two cables we used for the lower heating element and that's it so without further ado, let's jump into the mod. Before proceeding with this mod, I strongly recommend you to follow my tutorial of the thermal insulation in order to avoid risk and damage the oven. As always, you will find the link at the top right among the recommended videos. Pizza time! And after about two weeks of waiting, here is the package directly from Valencia. We open it quickly. And here is the heating element in the Coera branded bubble wrap. After opening it, we find the protection of the Feston terminals. Coera informed me that they produced two models, one with Feston terminals of 4.8 mm, which is exactly the version that you will see in my video, and that fits the Spice Caliente. Then there is also a normal version which has 6.3 mm Feston terminals. Going to the measurements, we see a diameter of about 24.5 cm in the outermost part for almost all around the circumference, and the distance between the two circles of the Coera of about 3.5 centimeters. Obviously these measurements may vary slightly after the installation and after the forging that you will do. Near the terminals we notice a slight inclination of the Coera. We should install it with the curvature facing upwards as we will see in a moment. Now I'm showing a preview of the diameter difference compared with the two original heating elements that reach in my case a maximum diameter of 21.5 centimeters. So the three additional centimeters that we get with the Coera will certainly help as I said in the introduction when I listed the advantages. 
When zooming in, we can see this is the 1400 watts, 230 volts model. And now let's get to work by dismantling the wall thing and starting by removing the stone. Then we proceed opening the stainless steel dome. We are now accessing the cable section. We see the 110 volt uh, LED that will no longer be compatible with this mod and will therefore be eliminated or replaced by a 220 version of the same LED. And now we start to disassemble the two heating elements. We take off the original spacers and the steel wire that held the two heating elements together. Then we disconnect the four fast on terminals from the two heating elements. Then the upper dome attachment will have to be removed. And then we can unscrew the four nuts that fix the heating elements to the dome. We might want to put aside the four nuts since Coera provides two new ones, so I will use those two. Now we will only remove the two heating elements from the body of the oven. And then the dome in order to make room for the coera. If you did my double heating elements modification like I did, now you will find uh, two additional holes that will have to be closed in order to prevent heat, fumes and moisture from entering easily in the back where we have all the cables. We cool them, use the original steel bracket of the oven for the central part and then for the two holes we could look for a couple of bolts with rounded head as I'm showing here. The alternative could be to create a brand new cover from a steel sheet and that's what we'll probably do later on. Now we will proceed by removing the cover of the feet and by unscrewing the six screws at the back of the oven. We also disassemble the base and remove the aluminium base so that we can work more easily. Then we can proceed by disassembling all the other screws as shown in the video. Now we can freely access to the lower section, here actually we don't need to do much, we'll just have to connect the two cables that went to the lower heating element, which in my case with the modification of the double heating elements, I had obviously to move them up. So now we'll first bring them down, so we have as few cable as possible above, especially now that they are not longer necessary.
In order to make the job easier, I marked the cables of the upper and lower heating elements, but you can easily refer to the assembly scheme that I created and that I think is extremely helpful and easy to follow. You will see that later in the video, but we basically need to just connect the two cables I marked as low. Here we can see the original LED that must be removed or replaced. This can also be seen in my scheme, obviously. Now, absolutely do not follow this step because I was going to blow up. Jokes aside, the oven made me trigger the lifesaver because I had uh, mistakenly connected the two cables of the LED. While uh, it would have been enough to just isolate them or at least uh, replace the LED with the 220 volts version. We can then proceed already with the first quick test, leaving everything this assembled and without touching anything, we connect it to the power socket and we disconnect it immediately as soon as we feel the heating element is getting warm. We can now close this section as we don't have to do anything else here. If you want you can also add the fiberglass sleeve but we don't have to worry so much about insulating the cables since not having a lower heating element in this area it means that it will not get so hot so we can reassemble the lower part. Now I am insulating the two cables of the LED with an high temperature adhesive tape, so if I want to add a new LED in the future I can do it easily. If you prefer you can completely eliminate these two cables if you do not think to make this change in the future. In order to summarize everything I created this electrical diagram easily understandable also by those who have no knowledge at all. For covering the heating elements terminals from the cooking chamber, as we see I cut out a piece of paper as a guide for the steel plate that we should create and I will simply follow it by using metal snips on a stainless steel sheet but you can obviously use the equipment that you feel more appropriate for the job. As we see the measurements match, now we should just recreate the holes of the screws and we could use two self-tapping screws for example. We now proceed with the dome insulation. For this I found a meter or so of this material with a resistance up to 1500 degrees celsius. But any other similar mat like for example the ceramic fiber based ones will be just fine. Now I will cut the two sheets even if the dome will probably have space only for one. I always recommend to do this operation in an open environment or at least not at home and use a mask and gloves or maybe wash your hands immediately because in most cases this is a toxic material that must not be inhalated. In my case this is a partially ecological material so there are no risks but I will anyway insulate it with thin foil and high temperature resistant tape before mounting it in the oven. We can complete the upper section connecting the fasten terminals and uh, insulating the cables where needed. I always recommend to isolate also the fasten terminals in order to avoid poor contacts. 
we now put our insulating mat covered with tin foil over the dome, helping us by pressing with the hands to make it adhere well to the steel and so that we do not have parts coming out. Then we add our steel cover using the original screws. We now move on to the forging that will be necessary to maintain the shape of the heating element over time. It is an operation to do during the first heating of the heating element so that we can shape it to our liking and according to our needs. We will need something which holds the coera evenly. The ideal would be to find a 25 centimeters steel bracket but I only found this 30 centimeters one which I had to bend for reducing it to about 25 centimeters. We can fix the bar using a 6 millimeters bolt nut as I'm doing. After installing the bracket our heating element will be in contact with the dome which is something we must absolutely avoid so we must put something in between the dome and the heating element that will give us a gap of 3 or 4 millimeters. As you can see I opted for these steel nuts it will be enough just three of these but many people simply use laundry clip springs for example. I prefer to always try to use steel and not aluminium but this will be just a temporary material that will then be removed as soon as the forging is completed so any material will be fine at this stage. After putting the three steel nuts you will see that I created the two newspapers from scratch because the original ones left too much space between the coera and the dome so I had to go for something different. Now we have completed the installation, so as a recap, I used the three bolts, then I created the two stainless steel spacers, I mounted the 30 centimeters steel bracket, which I had to bend in order to have 25 centimeters in total. I added the stainless steel wire where necessary, just to try to center the quera as much as possible. At the bottom we can see the steel plate we created earlier which will also protect the cables behind it. And now let's fire it up. The forging is now starting and uh, we will initially notice some smoke caused by the metal that we have added and also by the first ignition of the heating element. I strongly recommend to air the room well during the wall operation, especially if you are not single and do not want to get divorced. We will also have some unpleasant smells caused by the insulating mat that will go away just after the second or the third use. We keep the oven turned on for about 15 minutes until the coera glows with a vivid red color. And then we turn it off and let it cool completely. We will repeat the same operation another time or two. And here we are for the third and last ignition. Then we will remove the steel bracket and everything else. Here we have our oven completely cold. We now proceed by removing the bracket, the nuts and the steel wires. Now, in order to measure the gap between our stone and the coera, I will simply use a book which has about 4.7 cm of thickness. And we see the dome remains uh, slightly raised, so let's say we have about 4.5 cm inside, between the stone and the heating element. But it will also depend obviously on the type of stone that you use, its thickness, so by the type of the mat and its thickness, and also by how much you have tightened the screws at the base and the top. Here we can see the dog bolts I'll be using for analyzing our results. We're looking at a big 100 pizza dough. With the new heating element the pizza baking will be different from both a temperature and a timing point of view. So I will have to find the right balance but I decided to start with a stone temperature of uh, 500 degrees celsius for about 50 seconds or 1 minute maximum.
As we see the last pizza was baked a little longer, just under 80 seconds, because I lowered down the stone temperature from 500 to about 430 degrees, and then it resulted in less burned spots. I will anyway continue with some other tests in order to find the right balance. Then, summarizing everything, I can confirm the advantages uh, that I initially anticipated. First of all, the time required for getting the stone to a temperature of about 400 degrees is basically half of the time that was required for double thermal elements mod. I had to wait maybe less than 10 minutes in order to have a temperature of the stone over 400 degrees and being able to immediately bake. We have a more uniform baking of our pizza, as you have seen in the video, I did not need to turn the pizza around, also the crust does not touch the coera since we made the custom forging. The larger diameter also allow us to extend our dog bolts a bit more than we were used to do. Moreover, the baking time falls further when compared to the double heating element mod, so we have seen our pizza was ready between 40, 50 seconds and 1 minute. What is certain is that the heating element has an impressive power and releases an infernal heat. Obviously you have to get used to this power and calibrate the baking times and temperature in the best possible way. If you like to, you can also install an additional heating element under the stone. The previous ones we had are obviously no longer compatible since they are 110 volts, so you'll need to buy a new 220 volts heating element if you want to do something like this. But anyway, based on my test, I can say I have not noticed any particular difference apart from the fact that with the addition of a heating element on the base of our oven, we shortened of about one minute the time we had to wait between a pizza and the next one. I prefer the solution with the only superior heating element for an economic reason, but also for a lower power consumption and reduced cabling reasons, because the advantages are really almost zero in having an additional heating element. And I would say that's all we have for you today. If you like the video and you want to support the channel, leave me a like and share the video with your friends. Also watch the other videos in my channel if you like similar content and subscribe to the channel if you want to receive a notification about new videos that I will publish. Thanks again to everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next video.